Before elves. Before dwarfs. Before men. The old ones arrived upon this world. Then came chaos, and the great plan of the old ones was unmade. We are the last of their servants, and only by our hand shall the great plan be restored with the total defeat of the usurping younger races. The Lizard Men, sometimes known as the Cold Ones or the Children of the Gods, are an ancient and savage race of cold-blooded reptiles that were at one time the first and oldest civilization within the Warhammer world. Long before the rise of men, elf or dwarf, the empire of the Lizardmen ruled supreme. Alien, enigmatic, and without mercy, the Lizardmen were there when it all began, and will be there when the world draws its last dying breath, never tiring nor relenting until order is finally restored to this uncaring, chaotic world. Such is what they were made to do, for they are the ancient servants of the Old Ones and the true protectors of this very world. Once in a long and forgotten age, the Lizardmen ruled over it all, dominating this ancient world during an age of primeval monsters. Although their realm is now partly in ruins and overgrown, they seek once more to rise up and claim that which they have lost many millennia ago. While the task at hand remains near impossible, the Empire of the Lizardmen still fight on, unleashing their cold-blooded savagery upon any who would stand in the way of their sacred mission. From the lush jungles they come, beneath totems of gold. The Lizardmen march to war, the ground trembling from the approach of their large and mighty reptilian armies. They go to battle for reasons indecipherable to others, an ancient plan known only to themselves. None can ever understand their motives, nor their ceaseless drive, for none truly understand that they are the rightful inheritors of the world, and it is their sacred, if inscrutable, duty to restore order across the planet. If this means the wholesale eradication of the lesser upstart races outside of the Great Plan, then the Lizardmen Empire shall enact this world-spanning genocide once more. Thus the El Nehekarin were destroyed, and they collapsed into heaps of skulls and bones strewn across the desert. Their numbers could not prevail against the might of the Stegodons and the rage of the Alsorus. Although the wailing and the sight of the evil hordes would have struck terror into the hearts of mortal men, the Alsorus were not at all afraid. They just slew anything that came near them. The term Lizardman is the name used by many outsiders to represent all of the intelligent, cold-blooded denizens of the jungle continent of Lustria, and those jungled regions of the Southlands in which the Lizardmen dwell. The Lizardmen, as a whole, are a race of large, bipedal, reptile and amphibian hybrids that live almost exclusively within warm tropical climates and jungle environments. Though many often find little distinction between each of the individual species that make up their civilization, the Lizardman race is not a single race, but rather it consists of a collection of vastly different species. Although they may be genetically related to other reptiles that inhabit the continent of Lustria, only the Slan, the Saurus, the Skinks, and the Croxigors are considered an actual part of the core Lizardman race. 
The mystical slan appear almost toad-like, with bloated, sluggish bodies that contain an almost alien intellect. Large, unearthly creatures, the slan are quite unlike anything else seen within the world. Their heads are large to match the mighty intellect held within, and their eyes are bulbous and all-seeing. They can live for thousands of years, and their bodies become more bloated with the passing centuries. The powerful Saurus are like large, bipedal crocodiles whose entire body seems geared towards combat and warfare. They stand larger than a man, with a bony crest protecting their heads and neck, and tough scales that run down their backs, arms and spines. Even unarmed, Saurus are perfectly capable of slaying their enemies, for their tails and limbs are equipped with all manner of naturally hard spurs and talons, and their jaws are powerful enough to crush bone. The cunning skinks are small, Agile and intelligent creatures evolved from amphibious animals that lived in the swamps of Lustria many millennium ago. The skinks have the greatest variation in comparison to the other lizardman species, but all are universally small, skittish, stealthy and swift. This makes them exceptionally good hunters, stalking through the dense jungles and killing any warm-blooded creature that would dare to venture into their world. The skinks have a natural affinity with water, and can swim swiftly through dark jungle swamps and rivers. The Hulking Croxigores are the largest of the Lizardmen race. They are essentially giant cousins of the Saurus, bred for their brute strength and power. They are large, powerful creatures, yet their intellect and speech abilities are far more limited than those of the Saurus. They are terribly strong creatures, able to bear enormous loads, and they are encased in almost stone-hard scales of powerful reptilian armor. The Lizardmen's core species, such as the Slan, Saurus, Skinks, and Croxigores, are not born from eggs, like their feral reptilian cousins, but they come from special pools and ponds located within sacred regions of the jungle. The birthing of a new generation of lizardmen are called spawnings. Every temple city has its own sacred ponds and expanses of marsh where the spawning events occur. Skinks and croxigores tend to spawn in ponds and swamps open to the sky, whereas saurus and certain other croxigores are usually spawned in dank, subterranean caverns. Pyramid temples are frequently built over the top of the entrances to such caverns, and outlying swamps are sometimes made into rectangular ponds encircled by stone. Due to their amphibious origins, some days after the spawning event begins, little tadpoles emerge out of the water, growing in numbers and size at an extremely accelerated rate, feeding on the enormous number of tropical insects that hover above such waters. When the Lizardmen are fully developed, they emerge onto dry land in enormous numbers, all at the same time. The interval between spawnings can be very long, and usually a spawning will not reoccur in the same pond within the lifetime of the last generation that was born there. Thus, each city is surrounded with multiple spawning pools which spawn at different times of the year. Each spawning is linked to astrological cycles and will always begin at certain conjunctions of stars and planets. Since each generation emerged from different ponds at different intervals in time, there are always a dozen lizardmen of the same age and origins living within tightly knit groups within their home city. Being of the same spawning, different age groups will also have varying degrees of features which are unique to that particular spawning, such as different skin tones, unique markings, a calm and calculated attitude towards administrative duties, or a fierce and warlike attitude towards war. These large groups of lizardmen have given a single directive or purpose upon their birth, such as either being formed into cohorts of tribal warriors, 
or to become artisans and workers for their respective temple cities. Those spawnings that only birth a single individual usually means that this particular lizardman is meant to be a leader amongst their kind. Due to the timing of spawnings, the mage priests have careful records which detail the time when a new spawning will occur, but not all are recorded, and some spawnings will appear to happen at random intervals in time. I think it's safe to say that the reproduction of the Lizardmen, this system of spawning series, is a great embodiment of the great plan. How the Lizardmen follow these set rules without question, and without designing them themselves, they know that this works by a magical calendar and an ancient will, the will of the old ones. We came upon a small, ruinous platform. On top of this were arrayed a group of skinks, and the larger and more ferocious warriors called Saurus. Sat in front of them on a golden carrying throne was a creature like a great bloated toad. They told me that they were called the Slan. The lizard men are all ruled, and their society is governed by the mystical Slan, the most intelligent and powerful of the lizard men overall. It is they who rule the other lizard men as a sacred caste of powerful magic users, each one bearing the title of Mage Priest. The Mage Priests are all in practicality the political and religious leaders of their entire civilization. All of the Slan living to this very day belong to the sacred caste, because they all possess the ancient intellect and magical powers bred into their race by the Old Ones of the Halcyon Age. However, one of the tragedies of the Lizardman race is the fact that all of the Slan that are alive today are only the descendants of those who have seen the Old Ones in person. Those that actually came with the Old Ones are already long dead and their relics lost to time. Within the hierarchy of the Mage Priest caste, the oldest of the Slan are the most powerful within their caste, each of which are divided into five spawnings in descending order in relation to power and importance. Those of the first spawning are the greatest and most powerful of them all. Unfortunately, all of them have since died out, leaving the second spawning to claim the title of Lord Mage Priest. There are only five lords left in existence, but each one reigns over the great and major temple cities of the Lizardman Empire. The Slan of the Third Spawning, known as Master Mage Priest, are twice as many in number and rule the lesser pyramid temples within the Lizardman realm. The Slan of the Fourth Spawning are known as Mage Champions and serve as the generals and leaders of the Lizardman army in times of war. The Fifth Spawning is the most numerous and are the most energetic and alert of them all. They also occupy the lowest position within their caste, and only carry the simple title of Mage Priest. The prophecy of Sotek says, At the time of the 300th cycle of this world, the two moons shall unite and summon forth the Rodent God and his evil spawn to deliver plague and pestilence upon the land named Lustria. The lizard men all revere the old ones as almighty deities, the ancient and long forgotten creators of this very world. Many long bloody millennia have passed since the collapse of the polar gates and the departure of the old ones. No living slan mage priest remains to speak of them, and so they passed from memory into legend. Ever since then, the enigmatic Old Ones have come to be regarded not as benevolent rulers of an order spanning the universe and dimensions, but now as a distant, long-lost pantheon of hungry gods. With no first-hand knowledge of the Old Ones, and with their records scattered and incomplete since the Great Catastrophe, the Lizard Men have but a fragmented picture of their creators. The sacred plaques 
are replete with oblique and obscure references to the various old ones and their deeds, and from these the lizard men have come to associate specific traits with the individual old ones. Talanxa, for example, is an old one described in many glyphs as the embodiment of the warlike nature of the lizardmen, and a pair of matching glyphs, sequence in Hexoltal and Itza, make reference to him as riding to war on an almighty sky chariot. Quetli is spoken of in the sacred plaques of Hexoltal as the protector of the true way. Zotal, the old one after which the temple city is named, is described in every sequence that mentions him as the chooser of those destined for greatness. As the lizard men have come to conflict with more and more races, the old ones associated with the martial aspects of the lizard men's nature have come to the fore. The way the lizard men worship the old ones is a highly ritualistic affair, but its exact form depends on the deity in question and the nature of the worshipper who conducts it. The mage priest, for example, reside over all manner of ceremonies that occur within this domain and yet remain impassive throughout the whole entire experience. A mage priest may be carried to a high altar to make this ceremony an official event, yet he would remain in his meditation trance all the while, completely unaware or uncaring of the ceremony itself. As such, it is the skink priests that actually carry out the many and varied observances, abasements and rites associated with each old one. The Saurus too pay homage to the lost gods, though these simple-minded creatures do so in their own simple way. They may heap the bodies of fallen enemies before a totem to the warrior defender Quetzal, for example, or swallow whole the still-beating heart of the vanquished in honour of Tzkatli, he who grants the strength to a warrior's arm. Even the near-mindless Croxigors take obeisance to the gods of the Lizardmen. This worship comes from a resounding, low rumbling chant as the sun rises. Perhaps once, before the great catastrophe, the lizard men communicated directly to their masters, or had no need to do so at all, since their needs were already predicted and met. Long after their departure, however, the lizard men go to ever greater lengths to enact the will of their lost gods. Those few races that encounter the Lizardmen, and live to tell of it, find them an alien and incomprehensible race, utterly cold and devoid of compassion. Like wild beasts, the Lizardmen are instinctive and savage, they say. They are able to slaughter every last one of their foes with brutal efficiency, and they do not know the meaning of remorse. However, the way of the war that the lizard men undertake is not inherently cruel. Even when mercilessly mauling an invader, or wiping out those deemed undesirable, the lizard men do not wantonly kill for its own sake. That changed the day that the Skaven came. While superstitious acts have gained in popularity since the loss of the old ones, these were taken to horrific new levels with the coming of the new god Sotek. Inspired by Tehenhuen, the skink priests led the ritualistic slaughter of untold thousands of foul ratmen. These skaven were sacrificed in horrific fashion, sometimes thrown alive into writhing pits of serpents, other times split open and choice organs proffered to the heavens. If the skaven was lucky, he was simply beheaded by a Saurus executioner. It is recorded that Croc Gar, a mighty Saurus leader, has personally delivered the killing strike to over a thousand Skaven warlords since the event known simply as the Rise of Sotek. Entire temple cities would turn out to watch the sacrifice of an important Skaven commander, the vast plazas filling with clamorous skinks. For the most part, the inscrutable slam mage priests leave such barbaric practices alone, although they no longer ignore the popular rise of the new god Sotek, 
nor could they rein in the base practice of offering up sacrifices to attract the blessings of the gods. Their leader, who was bedecked in feathers, edged towards me. It was I who spoke first. Salam, brother, we come in peace. He spoke to me in his own tongue, which I did not understand. It was time to declare the reason for our entry into this land before they decided to attack us. The Lizardmen language, known as Saurian, is a primeval reptilian tongue. It is almost unpronounceable for any race other than the Lizardmen to speak, due in part because it contains so many unique sounds that can't be spoken in other tongues. Only a Lizardman can voice these or interpret them as words or sentences. The Lizardman's written language is much more understandable, mainly being composed upon glyphs chiseled into bare stone or gold. It is doubtful whether the Saurian tongue was spoken by the Old Ones, as they probably communicated with the Slan by means of telepathy. As such, many scholars believe that the Saurian language is one unique to the Lizardman race. Totally. There were many small pyramids clustered around the larger pyramids. As well as these were terraces, numerous rectangular pools glinting in the sunlight, tall obelisks and other structures. All of these were intricately carved and painted. One building was still under construction. I could see huge beasts, which looked like a cross between a dragon and an elephant dragging massive blocks of stone up large ramps. The din of thousands of skinks chipping away at the stones with chisels reached my ears, as well as the rasping of orders of the foreman directing their work. The society of the Lizardmen is highly sophisticated and ancient beyond reckoning. It was they who first became the world's first true civilizations, erecting their cities of ancient stone long before the rise of men, elf or dwarf. It was they who ruled the world as the most dominant civilization, eradicating whole species of undesirables from the face of the earth and writing down ancient mathematics and astronomy upon chiseled tablets of stone long before mortals even learned how to write. While many other civilizations have arisen and fallen over the long millennium, it is the Lizardmen who have truly endured throughout all ages, having been there from the birth of creation unto its final resting day. Even throughout all this time, Lizardmen society has remained unchanged for millennium, being focused around a highly structured and strictly enforced caste system. This caste system was built and formed by the orders of the Old Ones, whom themselves created each of the separate Lizardmen species to fulfill a certain role in their society. Each and every core species is born into one of these castes. Uh. The Lizardmen are taught and perhaps bred to be fanatically loyal to their respective duties, offering little room for any sense of individuality or freedom of thought amongst their kind. Within the system, each caste is composed strictly of one or two of the core species meant to fulfill an extremely important part of Lizardman society as dictated by the Old One's instructions, either as workers, warriors or rulers. The Ruler Caste The caste of the Slan are meant to provide the leaders and priests of the Lizardman cities. The Slan originally came alongside the Old Ones, acting as organizers, architects and techno-mages of their society, who are responsible for building the cities to the specific design of their masters. It was the Slan who built the polar warp gates, and their magic had maintained them until the Great Catastrophe. Unlike the rest of the Lizardman species, the Slan were notoriously few in numbers, with population usually consisting of no more than a few dozen individuals at any given place. The cast of the Saurus were bred by the Old Ones to become the warriors and guardians of their society, bred from the reptilian life that had already dwelt 
within the primeval jungles during the time of the Old Ones. They were bred specifically for the purpose of warfare. From the moment they've grown enough to crawl from their spawning pools, they know how to fight, enact military formations, and to carry out simple yet effective battle plans. They are extremely stubborn and ferocious fighters, encased within natural and highly effective reptilian body armor. They are rather simple creatures, and as such they lack greatly in the ability to comprehend and do complex duties other than fighting, but this is perfect for their function in the society. The cast of the Skinks and Croxigores were bred by the Old Ones specifically to be the workers, artisans and labourers of their society. The Skinks were bred to be physically and mentally agile, capable of executing complex tasks that their larger cousins can't comprehend. This allows them to perform many roles that require a quick mind to work, such as being translators, scribes, artisans and administrators of their own communities. Highly organised and sociable creatures, they are perfectly adapted to ensure the smooth day-to-day -day running of the temple cities. Alongside the smaller skinks are the notorious Croxagorbs, monstrous in stature, who act as powerful labourers for their smaller cousins. Being extremely dull-minded, the skinks work closely with their Croxagore cousins to enact large construction projects that would require their immense strength in order to finish. Amid the darkness and horror of a world splintering apart, the armies of the true creators, we who are ancient at the dawn of time, will march forth once more. We shall sweep away all that is chaos and disorder, for ours is the true path and none shall defy us. Since the days of their creation, the Lizardmen have been at the forefront of the battle for the world's survival. Their armies are anchored by savage warriors spawned for the sole purpose of war and augmented with titanic reptilian beasts whose tread shakes the earth. Their enigmatic leaders are powerful wizards and wield magics beyond the ken of mere mortals. From deep in the steaming jungles of Lustria, the Lizardmen sound the drums of war, while gargantuan creatures from a primordial past bellow their blood rage. From temple cities and overgrown ruins, they issue forth to defend their ancient civilization, or to unleash their cold-blooded savagery upon the world. Merciless and relentless, the Lizardmen will not stop until all their foes are dead, and the entire world reordered according to their ancient plan. A Lizardman host, deployed for battle, is a fearsome sight. A screen of nimble skirmishers spreads out first, followed by rank after rank of merciless warriors. They are guided by the mightiest of mages, and their war leaders are battle-scarred veterans who will fight to the bitter end. In the air above, winged beasts screech, while out of the jungles stomp hulking reptilian monsters, pitiless, savage creatures of an elder age. Yet the Lizardmen do not war for plunder or for territory, but instead they fight for a higher cause, a world order laid out ages ago by their long-lost cosmic masters. In times of war, a temple city often has a standing army to protect it from harm or to march out and eliminate their foes on the field of battle. The Saurus typically form the core of the Lizardmen armies, for their sole purpose in life was to be trained as powerful and fearless warriors. Alongside these mighty reptiles, cohorts of skinks are often called up to aid the army as a force of dedicated scouts and skirmishers, able to navigate the lush jungles of Lustria with extreme ease. Alongside these small skinks come the massive croxigors, whom are often given the duty of hauling equipment and heavy machinery, 
or sent out into the fray as powerful shock infantry. Yet it isn't these mighty warriors that truly invokes the fear upon their enemies, but rather the mighty reptilian beasts that fight alongside them. From the mighty Carnosaurs to the hulking Stegodons, these massive reptilian monsters have proven themselves time and time again as powerful allies for the Lizardmen's cause. Yet even above these mighty beasts comes the true power of the Lizardmen. From above the fighting, the mystical Slan unleashes magic so powerful that it is likened to those of gods hurling powerful lightning storms or massive meteorites against their enemy with an ease that belies the imagination. The Slan are truly intelligent beyond mortal comprehension, able to foresee the outcome of a battle long before it has even begun. It is said that so long as a Slan leads them in their campaign, the Lizardmen cohorts are assured of ultimate and glorious victory time and time again. <laughs>